is Unexpected with Hannah Love. In this podcast, you will gain a new perspective of how God loves you enough to call you to things that you couldn't have imagined for yourself. Hello, everybody. I am so excited. I am sitting across from the most beautiful and beautiful-hearted woman. Her name is Georgia Brown. And Georgia, I have to admit, when I refer to you, I always call you sweet Georgia Brown. It just sounds fitting. Um, And if you know her, you would know that to be true. Sweet Georgia Brown, you are originally from Arkansas Mm -hmm. and are now in Nashville, She is a writer, a speaker, a podcaster. Um, You are a woman of all trades. You do it all. You're also a singer-songwriter, worship leader. I mean, what can't you do? And you're only 24 years old. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, I can't wait to see what we have in store today. I'm going to toss it over to you and let you share a little bit about yourself, your story, and your unexpected. Mm, Hannah, I can't stop smiling. Girl, I love you. It's so good to see you. It's so good to oh, see you. Oh, it's been you. too long. I, I forgot to say, Georgia and I met, I think, four years ago now Wow. at a conference. Yep. And we just kind of kept, like, passing mm-hmm. each other in this we town did. and touching base occasionally. And um, I knew I wanted you on when I started this podcast. You've actually been on my list of Mm-hmm. of people that I want to talk to, but it's taken two years and we're finally here. So I'm glad that I finally got you on today. Me too. I think this is God's sweet, perfect timing. It it's is. just been such a sweet journey. I remember when I met you in Memphis at that conference yes. and I smelled something so good and I was like, what is that? And you had some <laughs> essential oils. That is so <laughs> embarrassing, but yes, I did. And, and I, I was had like, my oils. can I have some? I didn't even know you. And you let me have some essential oils. I, did. I passed them around. I mean, it was like all those women in there smell catnip. And I mean, what a place for some oils was... Uh, a woman's conference woman's makes conference. sense. It makes does. sense for All essential oils. In the world. Oh yeah, it was just so <laughs> sweet. And what a journey it's been since that moment. Mm-hmm. And I was I was reflecting on this when we got here, on the way here, was the day you told me you were starting a podcast. It was so sweet, Hannah. I was actually in my prayer closet, and you sent me a text, and you're like, "I think I'm going to be starting a podcast. If you could be praying." And that day, I literally prayed for you that morning oh, on my prayer you. card, put it on the wall. And I remember it was on the bottom row because it was at the very beginning of a year. And it was just so sweet. And to see us here now, like I'm so wow. humbled and I'm so proud of you. And Thank you. oh, so to be your sister is just a joy. But I guess I'll back up. You're, like you said, I am Georgia from Arkansas. You kind of took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> when I was a tour guide here at Middle <laughs> Tennessee, that's what I would say to all the people was, hey, I'm Georgia from Arkansas, Arkansas, but now I'm living in Tennessee. I would get a few laughs, but mostly from the parents. Yes. But man, oh man, I was born and raised in Arkansas for the first 18 years of my life, and I grew up in the church. But really, Hannah, I was in the church, but I wasn't in Christ. You know, like you go to the building, but I really didn't know what it meant to be a part of the body. I just showed up and, Mm -hmm. you know, we prayed before every meal and before bed, but I didn't really know what like a walking relationship with Jesus really looked like. My parents instilled biblical principles in me, but it wasn't a personal relationship Mm -hmm. yet. You know what I'm saying? Was baptized at 30 days old, you know, right? that's what you know, my denomination believes. And um, so, yeah, I just kind of grew up in in church. And at nine, girl, I stopped going to Sunday school and I was on the worship team. <laughs> and so I was just up there singing with my grandpa, which was so sweet. But then at the age of 12, Hannah, my life changed. And that was my first experience with Church Hurt as the denomination that we were a part of as a whole mm-hmm. was going through a denominational split. We did that as well. Oh, it was so hard. Mm-hmm. It was so hard because at 12, I, I didn't understand, right. you know. Uh, I remember singing uh, a uh, Amy Grant song that she did with uh, Natalie Grant, and it was called uh, Bring It All Together. <laughs> and that was the last time we went to that church. Okay. And I thought it was my fault. I was like, did I not sing good enough? Like, what's wrong? And then my mom said, no, baby girl, like, we just aren't going to go there because they're not standing for the biblical things that we stand for in God's Word. And at this point, I had a Bible, but it stayed on the shelf. Sure. You know? Right. And so at 12 and a half, we started a church with all those sweet old people that were three-fourths on the way to heaven, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, they handed me a hymnal, and they said, you're going to be our worship leader. And I said, okay. (laughs) 
And so from 12 and a half to 18, I led worship. And really, music kind of became my identity. It wasn't fully found in Christ. It was what I could do for Christ. Sure. And um, it wasn't until I left for college to come here that I realized, hey, like, he's my everything. I fully surrender over to you. And I got off the platform. My voice wasn't used for a three and a half minute melody. And I held a door. I joined a small group in college and I got plugged in. And people will say that college is the time of your life where, you know, three, four years of your life, get it out of your system, just Mm -hmm. go do what you want to do. But really what I discovered was that's what's going to sustain you for the next 30 and 40 years of your life. So whatever you pour in is what's going to pour out of you. Mm -hmm. And so college was one of the best seasons of my life. And the Lord really showed me that, hey, I can use you for more than a melody. Your voice, I want to use all sides of it. And so being able to speak, right, Instagram captions that are like basically my blog for (laughs) everyone to see to a voiceover on a reel to now being an author. Oh, goodness gracious. I did not think that that was going to be a part of my story. That is very unexpected for me. But at the end of the day, when you say yes to Him and you start making small steps in the same direction— you will end up at the most beautiful destination Mm -hmm. that no GPS could take you to. And so I'm here (laughs) with my hands wide open and surrendered and truly in awe of Him because it is all Him. It is not me, but I'm so glad to be His. I love that. I love that. And you, like I I mean, you're 24 years old. You have such wisdom and such maturity at a young age. And I hope that you don't take offense when I say that, but I'm in my 30s now, so I feel like I can. <laughs> um, so what, when you got to college, was there, was there like a point that you could point to and say, this defined the choice that I made to be on my knees and to have a personal relationship and to get um, off the platform and unplugged and into the church and and really building that personal relationship for yourself outside of what you learned as a child growing up and in the church growing up. Was there a pivotal moment for you where something clicked? Mm -hmm. Because I know that sometimes it takes a hardship or, you know, a heartbreak or something along those lines to make a stop Mm. and make those decisions going forward. Yeah. Oh, there is a moment. There's many moments, but one that really sticks out to me is the journey of getting to the college for the very first time. The car is packed. You can't even see out the back of the rear view mirror. Good thing we're going forwards and daddy's driving. (laughs) But we were crossing the Memphis Bridge from Arkansas into Mm -hmm. Tennessee. I know it well. Yes, right, girl, my Arkansas girl, woo pig. I just remember looking out the window, and it was the most simple prayer I've ever prayed, but it was the most honest prayer of just like, hey, God, it's me, basically. Mm -hmm. And I said— Lord, I just want to be the best version of myself here. I had never moved before in my life. I've been going to the same school system, Mm -hmm. public school, made it out, yeehaw, and I didn't have to work hard to make friends. This was the first time where I only really knew my roommate's name. Mm -hmm. I would have to step up to the plate and decide, hey, I'm going to do my homework today. I'm going to go to church this Sunday morning. I'm going to eat. I'm going to roll out of bed and go to that 8 a.m. class, even though I'm tired from doing homework at 2 a.m. Here we are. And I had to step up to the plate because mommy and daddy weren't holding my hand anymore. Mm -hmm. They gave me the foundation for these 18 years. They showed me what a walk with Christ looked like. Now it was time for me to live it out. So I had that Bible that was on the shelf that I hadn't really touched. And it was up to me and Jesus now to have this relationship hand in hand. And so it took time. There were a lot of moments of stumbling and hitting the potholes in the road. And oh, but he never gave up on me. So I wasn't going to give up on this relationship either. And so there were many moments along the way of learning what it meant to fully surrender and just talk to him in the hardship with the friends, with the boys in college, with the, the things that were happening on the dorm floor that I didn't agree with the smells or the substances, whatever, and just standing your ground, even if that meant being quiet and just Mm -hmm. going back to your dorm and saying a prayer and saying no. Mm -hmm. And so it's been the most joyful journey. It's not an easy one, but it is one that you will never regret because it's one that is not of this earth. It's, It's heavenly. 
exactly. It's well, you, you address it so beautifully in your book when you you break down the Lord's Prayer and you talk about holiness, yeah. which means set apart. Um, and that does look like being different and being set apart from what the world says is normal or okay. Um, and so, man, I just really I applaud you and I just look up to you. I'm so proud of you for doing that at a college age. I feel like so many people, and I've talked to to girls on here that will say, you know, I left and started college. And, and it really is a time in your life where you have choices to make that are yours outside of your parents mm-hmm. um, and, and your maybe your influences from back home and high school and your friend group because it's all new and you're starting over and it's a blank slate, except this time you've got your big girl panties on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so, man, I just love that. Is there anything that you could say today that would encourage someone who is about to start down that path or is like filling out college applications yeah. for next spring or, you know, something that you could pass along that that you held on to because, and I, I can't wait to get into this, but um, I know you have your prayer closet. So yes. so I, <laughs> I hope that we'll get to touch on that in a minute. But is there anything that you would say was a piece of advice that was just invaluable to that season? Oh, Hannah, I love that. I love that you said set apart because I think for so long in high school, even with just trying to keep up with the trends for me in high school is miss me jeans. Everybody had the miss me jeans and I just wanted to fit in. And so I think that's a lot of girls struggles too, even when Absolutely. you come to college. I mean, it really doesn't stop. It I'm, never ends. I'm sure okay, as a mama, I'm in my thirties you know. and I will tell you it never <laughs> ends. There's, there's always going to be something yeah. and you can decide if, if you're going to let the world dictate your value and your worth, or if you're going to say, you know what, I'm okay to just listen to you, God, because yeah. what you say is more important than what they say. For sure. And you were never meant to blend in in the first place. That's right. There's only one you. And that is a miracle in and of itself. Like your fingerprint is your fingerprint. When we look at you, it is literally a reflection of heaven that only you can shine. And if I would have gotten that sooner, I think I would have saved myself a lot of hurt, a lot of hangups and heartbreak because, man, you are significant. And Mm. I just, I want everyone listening to know that when you look in the mirror, like there's only one you. And so when you go into these new spaces and places and atmospheres, you are there to shift that atmosphere and bring a light that only you can bring. And so get excited, get expectant for the Lord to move in and through your life. Because I love Ephesians 2.10 where it says you are his masterpiece, which is so true. So true, right? And usually we stop there, Hannah. What I love is the end of that verse says he has good works for you that have already been prepared in advance for you to do. So when it comes to that college application, when it comes to I'm halfway through school and I don't even know what I'm going to major in, all of these decisions, it's like a treasure hunt with Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of in that right now with some more projects in life. I'm like, okay, Lord, you obviously knew this day was going to come, that this was going to happen. Um, what so next? what's up? Yeah. I'm like, what's <laughs> Where up? Where are we going? For real. I'm like, tell me your secrets. Tell me your heart. And I love him so much. Like he wants us to just come back. Right. He's like, I'll give you a little bit more tomorrow. I'll meet you at this time. Because he's never late for a coffee date with us. Yes. He's always waiting on us. And so get excited, stay expectant, and know that this has all been prepared in advance for you. So really, the yoke is easy, the burn is light. You just got to say yes to him. And hand it to him. Yes. So, oh, it's just so exciting. So I'm pumped about your life, friends. Well, I love that. And I love that if you do stand and make those choices, you could be the person that changes someone else's life yeah. because maybe you're in a room full of full of things that are going on and and you have the courage to stand up or to to say no or to to whatever it is. And maybe someone else there wasn't brave enough mm. or felt the same way. And then when they see you make that choice, go, you know what? Me too. Girl, because there it has to right. There has to be a spark for there to be a fire, and and that yeah. has to start somewhere. So why not us? Like that's what yeah. God calls us to. Why not us? You're making me think of a story, Hannah, that I've never shared publicly, and I just know this is the Holy Spirit. I was in college, and it was that first semester, and it was December, December first actually, and a girl like five doors down um, had a boy over past visiting hours, and it was not going well. Um, 
I just heard a little slam against the door and it just broke my heart. And so I've always been the kid since like first grade that I was like, this is not should be happening, teacher. This is not good. Yes. That's just who I am. I'm like, this is right and this is wrong and this situation is wrong. So told the floor monitor and all this stuff and this situation happened with this girl and this boy and that girl was so hurt and all the other girls on the floor came and wrapped around her. But everyone wanted to be in my dorm. Not that I could say anything or do anything, but they just wanted to be because I wanted to cultivate a place of safety mm -hmm. and a place for God's presence to just be. And at this point, my walk with him was like, I'm going to open up the Bible, highlight one verse. That That's all about I could hold, right. you know? Right. And it, it was just the sweetest thing because he meets us right there in that. And so to see all these girls just wanting to be around the light, mm -hmm. even though I was still discovering the light himself sure. for me, it, it changed a lot. It yeah. changed a lot. And so like you said, like just be that friend that you want to have. Be that light in the darkness. Be available. Be willing and know that you're needed. And so even just opening your door up, even opening your door up, literally that night, they all like stayed in my room. We had air mattresses. They brought their <laughs> mattresses in and they just wanted to be. So be someone's safe place. Mm. Let Jesus be your safe place. And man, I just I just I felt led to share that. I love <laughs> that so much. And you're right, because we are to be a reflection of him. Yeah. And 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 you also said this, but it's what you take in, what you pour into yourself, that's what you're gonna pour out. Yeah. And so, you know, what your eyes take in, what your ears listen to, everything matters. It's so important. And if you are soaking in Jesus, even if it's just opening the page and highlighting the one line, mm -hmm. that word is still going to be written on your heart. Mm -hmm. And it will come back to you when you need it because that's the Spirit, Holy Spirit's prompting. Um, I love that. That is so good. Um, any advice for maybe mamas of girls? And I mean, I guess boys too. I've got boys, but yeah, you do. I know especially <laughs> I have a lot of, uh, of mamas and women out there. And sometimes I get messages from moms that are like, man, my girls are older, but I sent them this today because I love that you spoke to that. So mm. anything that uh, you would share with mamas maybe about uh, mm. sending those babies out into, into those environments? Absolutely. Mamas. Oh, you're so loved. Thank you. Thank you for just loving your girls and your boys. And man, oh, man, I love my mama, and I'm so grateful for her. Her birthday was actually yesterday. Well, oh, happy birthday, oh, mama. We just love Mama B. She's so sweet. And one thing that I'm just really grateful that she did do, and honestly I wish she would have done more of, is just be honest mm -hmm. with her story. And just tell me the, the highs, the lows, what happened in between, because it can save you a lot of hurt. Can. In well, your own story. And I also think that we grew up in in a place and a time even, um, mm -hmm. though I am older than you, but we we live in the Bible Belt. Yeah. Um, and we live in we live in the South and we live in a place where oftentimes it's it's more kosher to sweep something under the rug than to to air it all out, as they say. And and I think that that's something that our generation is working really hard to um, uncover, yeah. if you will, mm -hmm. and kind of work through and 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 learn a lot of healing in that, and then going back and taking those healing practices and um, and what God is doing and taking it back to their families, so that they have freedom from that. Yeah, because I mean, I got pregnant with Asher before we got married, and that was something that. It's taboo in the South and in and, and Christian communities, and there was a lot of shame, and there were a lot of things that I had to work through and that my parents had to work through, but I couldn't let that detract from Asher knowing one day how loved he is yeah. and how much God knew that the world needed him mm -hmm. and that God doesn't make mistakes. Even though we do, He turns them for the good and and they can be the greatest blessings of our whole lives. So you're right. I think that that is such a good piece of advice to mamas mm. about about not hiding the bad, even though I'm a mom now and I don't want Asher to hear all the bad things. In right. fact, he's in a phase right now where— Tell me. What's he doing? He's he, so sweet. He has noticed that they throw newspapers at the end of our driveway. Yeah. <laughs> right? 
but he wants to gather them up and read them. All and, of them. And and he's just six, but he reads like a sixth grader. Like he, <laughs> he can read everything. And so he's like, Mama, can I have this and read it and add it to my collection? And I'm like, poor guy doesn't know that the news is really just full of like bad stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, no, buddy. And he's like, why not? And why don't you read it? And I don't want to read. And I'm, it's that protective nature in us to want to um, keep our kiddos from seeing the ugliness of the world too soon. And I think that that's very valid, that there is an age yeah. um, and an appropriateness to to what they're exposed to. But when you have gone through something yourself, um, you're right. I think it could prevent heartache for your own kids if they knew that mama made that mistake or daddy made that mistake and and they shared that with me. And I know I don't want to do that. So for sure. And I the protection it. is is everything. That innocence, that childlike faith. We have to come like a child. Mm-hmm. And so keep your babies babies. Keep them babies. Keep them babies. Because like you you know, babies don't keep, but what you're what you're sowing into them, like these seeds, it's so important. And that's what's gonna sprout up later. And I wouldn't be who I am without my mom and daddy. I wouldn't be who I am without my church and then the church split and then the yeah. other years of doing ministry so young and having to grow up really quite quickly. Yeah. And it's just such a sweet journey. And another thing that I would I would say to parents is keep on praying. Yes. Like your prayers are so heard. And I know so many people that are praying for their prodigal or just praying for their child to to say yes to Jesus That's or right. to get out of that relationship mm-hmm. or to just kind of wake up from the way that they've been a walk in or just that their relationship would be closer because they miss them. Yes. Or they're halfway across the country or, you know, around the world. And your prayers are heard. And man, the Lord is with you. Mm-hmm. And it just, it's really comforting to know that He hears. Because sometimes he can feel far. <laughs> yes. But he's not. He's, he's closer not. than your next breath. He has never left. And yeah. I think it's really cool that we get to partner with him. Yes. That's what he wants from us, right? Like when we pray, I know you've said this in your book, like it, it's not like you're just throwing out, you know, wishes in a wish to a wishing well, Mm-mm. like or a 911 call, you said. Yeah. And that's right. And we can pray those prayers, but God wants us to talk to Him. Mm -hmm. And God wants us to partner with Him, which means we get to say, God, what do you want? Who can I pray for? How can I pray? Like, lead me in the next whatever it is in life. And that's why I love listening to your stories that you share, because those those are a reflection of you hearing what God is saying to you in your prayer life. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Hi, guys. I just wanted to pause to tell you about one of our amazing sponsors. If there is one thing that I know about, it is the Bible. I use it every day, and I love comparing versions. This new version that I have found is called Journal the Word Bible. They have many editions and many formats, both for men and women, and they have all kinds of sizes from standard to large print, and they even have a pocket size book, which I love because when I was in college, I carried a pocket size Bible wherever I went. I know college is starting back, your kiddos are going back, and it would be a great gift idea as you are sending them out into this big old world. So if you are interested and you love beautiful Bibles that are translated beautifully, you may even like journaling prompts and margin for writing your own notes. These are the Bibles for you. You can check them out at your local Christian bookstore or journaltheword.com. And now back to our show. It's been quite the journey. It really all started back in college. Like I feel like so much happened in college as it does within those four years. But My prayer closet was really birthed from a place of, I don't know what to do, Lord, (laughs) truly. I had seen the movie War Room. Have you seen that movie? Okay, I saw it, and, like, I was— again, I was going through a phase where I'm like, I'm not taking anything in unless it is, like, good. Mm -hmm. Like, unless Uh there's something that God wants me to get out of it, I don't want to watch it, which is why I, at this point, only watch, like, 
home makeover shows and like pure flicks. <laughs> no, for real. It's real. <laughs> yes. No, it's very real. And so like our eyes are a gate and our ears are a gate to what we take in and um, and that's what comes out of us. And so I was like looking for movies. And at the time, I think when it came out, like there weren't, there wasn't no. like pure flicks. So no. it's not like there was a plethora of Christian you know, material for you to consume or entertainment. And I found it and I was like, this is so good. And I think I was in college. I don't remember. But I just remember thinking, I don't know anyone that lives their life like this. Mm. And I loved it. And then later I found out that the main woman was Priscilla Shearer. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I love her. I listen to her all the time. And it made it even better. So anyway, that was my experience with it. But carry on. No, I love your experience because— I think it's one of those movies that just hits you, and then the Lord kind of tucks it in your back pocket. Mm -hmm. I love the Kendrick brothers. They're so incredible. I got to tell you, Hannah, I just wanted to thank them, like, for making this movie. And then the Lord finally let that happen. I was like, listen, bros, you have no idea. Like, this movie changed my life. Like, it it changed my life. And that's what sweet ministry is and all these different mediums of doing it through a movie. Like, the Lord can use anything. Anything. It's so sweet. And so I'd seen the movie. I never had a walk-in closet. You see, back in Arkansas, (laughs) you'd open the door. I do know. (laughs) Yes. Back in Arkansas, you open the door. You and your clothes are there, and you close the door. <laughs> yes, and then you go on with your life. Yes. And so I I just didn't know what the luxury of a walk-in closet was. But here in college at my little apartment, right off of campus, I had a little shoebox of a closet that was a walk-in closet. Please tell me you lived at the links because I don't know what college kid hasn't lived at the links at some point in their career in the South. Girl, I wish I lived at the links. What was mine called? I don't know. I don't even remember. The Grove. The, the Grove. Grove. Ooh, yes. It was the Grove was the Grove. nice. It's nice. It was. It got me by. You know, <laughs> I, I was there, and I enjoyed my experience. It was nice being off campus. Yes. I will, like, recommend to all of our college people out there, live on campus if you can. It yeah. really helped me, like— stay grounded Uh and really get the full college experience. But it was nice to get off campus when you're, you know, an upperclassman. Yes. And so I had this little walk-in closet for the first time in my life. And my gosh, I wasn't thinking about praying. I was thinking about getting more clothes. (laughs) I was like, yes, we got more space. Let's go. But then one day, Hannah, my roommate uh, came to me and she sat me down on the couch and she told me that she went to a party. And I had never been to one. I mean, I don't think I would ever even get invited. People knew that I was I was all in for Jesus, and I still kind of dressed like I was 12 around campus, just bright colors, all the things. <laughs> so I think that they knew mm, she's not the girl to invite. So hearing my friend's story and experience, it wasn't a good one that she had. She had gotten taken advantage of, and it just broke me. It broke me to see that the person that I'm literally sharing a wall with was going through this and I had no idea. And it also made me feel so humbled that she would come to me with this and that she would share her heart in this just vulnerable state that she was in with me. And at this point, I had been like walking with Jesus himself and his spirit for a couple years now. But still, in my prayer life, I was not confident enough Mm -hmm. to pray out loud over her. And so I just held her. I gave her a hug, and I just sat there. And um, I told her I was going to pray for her. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been there where you're like, I'm going to pray for you? Oh, yes. You either do it or you forget. Right. (laughs) When you have the beautiful moment in front of you where Mm -hmm. you can do so and just pause, pray, and praise. Um, And so often we don't. Mm -hmm. And for me in that moment, it was because I didn't feel equipped. I didn't feel like I was going to say the right thing, Mm -hmm. that I would be embarrassed or something, when really, like, it's not about me in this moment. Right. And so after the hug, I got up and went back to my room, and somehow my feet found their way to that closet, and I fell to the floor. And I remembered that movie. I tucked it out of that back pocket, and I knew that Miss Clara in that movie prayed. And that was how she fought her battles. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, I can't do anything in this situation. This is the only way I can fight my battle is with him and giving it over to him. So I had a little note card, and I wrote a prayer for her on that note card, and I stuck it on the wall. And I sat there, and I cried, and I really laid it all out there. And once I felt released to get up, Mm -hmm. I got up, turned the light off, closed the door, and I went on. And I loved this physical representation of seeing the prayer, seeing this 
First of all, I also get distracted too, right? <laughs> Squirrel. Like, yes. From yes. up dog uh, the dog. Yes. I mean, dog the dog. Oh, yes. We refer, we yes. refer to squirrels a lot in Squirrel. our house. Yes. That is how I feel like my prayer life had been until writing them down. You can see it. Yes. So beautiful. And so you have to release it fully. You have to get up. You have to close the door and go on without your day what the Lord has for you and just releasing it fully to Him. Mm. Amen. The release. So be it. And so really every day since then, I graduated college two moves later. I thankfully still have a little walk-in closet, and I I pray for people. And it has been the most freeing thing I've ever done in my life to just lift up people to Him. Like this morning, I knew I was getting to see you, so my prayer was for you and your family you. and what the Lord has for you. And it is just the sweetest surrender. Mm to grow in friendship with Him. And it's like a little superpower to intercede for people, and they may never know, and they don't need to. They don't need that's to. That's not why you do it. No. Oh, I just love it. So in that's— the secret place. Yeah. I love it. And guys, secret place. I, I will share this because I've loved watching you over the years on Instagram, but you occasionally share clips from your closet. Yeah. And it absolutely—I mean, I'm an artist at heart, so it just makes my heart skip a beat when you see all of those beautifully colored—and she does. She uses different ink for different prayers, and so it's like a rainbow wall yeah. of just like— love and intention and relationship with Jesus. And I just love that, the visual love it. The artist in me loves that so much, and I know that God has to love it. Um, and I will say I'm a little bit um, disappointed in myself for not doing it because I've seen you do it for years, but I'm telling myself that I'm in a season because I'm like, I don't wow. have time to write down anything. However, your book is going to help me. I'm convinced yes. we will get to talk about your book, too. And you do have um, kind of a starting kit for those who want to start journaling their prayers. And I appreciate that so much, just having a place to stop and answer the question and then reflect is super important. So I can't wait yeah. to get to that too. Me too. And you know what? So sweet is the Lord sees you in your season and your season is significant. I'm not in a season right now of raising three boys and you're doing it so beautifully. Like when I see you, the season ahead, this is funny. This was my prayer. I was like, Lord, thank you that she is the sister in the season ahead that I can watch and know, okay, I will be that, that wife and a mom someday. Lord willing, Lord, I want to be able to do it biblically and with grace, and I see the way that you're raising them, I'm like, hallelujah, and that is ministry. Those are your prayers lived out. And so it it is great to have like a little journal space, but also while you're in between meals or I, you need to bring this back, the Lunchbox Chronicles. Listen, Ames oh. is about to go to Mother's <laughs> Day out, and I was like, oh my word, we're going to have to bust out the Lunchbox Chronicles again because Ames is going to school. Yes. Asher doesn't want me to pack his lunches anymore. Oh, so that's boy. Sad. That's it is sad. sad. That is sad. And so even when you're doing the lunchbox, <laughs> it's you're praying over that food that he's about mm -hmm. to enjoy, or you're cleaning up the toy room, or waiting for their daddy to get home, and just telling the boys how loved they are. Like those are your prayers out loud, and it is piercing the atmosphere. It is going straight to heaven, and it's straight to his heart, and it is a sweet aroma to him. And so, yeah, right now I'm in the season where I'm like, okay, I can spend an hour in the closet in the morning, but I know that that won't be forever. And this season that you're in won't be forever. So when we're in it, let's be in it. And so mm -hmm. I just I just love you. Wow. Well, guys, I didn't know that I would just be sitting here being encouraged by the one that I was interviewing. <laughs> but thank you. Your words are so kind and you're so gracious and so sweet. And you don't see all the bad moments because I don't put those out there for Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of them. But but I do like to think that there are mistakes that I make that I can pass along to, to those that, um, that, you know, want to hear my mistakes. So um, I guess one question that I had just one. On top of my mind, um, a lot of my listenership is um, most everyone is women, girls, women, teenagers. We've got an, an, a big bracket. But a lot of women ask me about singleness. Mm. And I know I can speak to singleness. I've had my years and my seasons, um, but now I'm married. And so my mind is more on, on that place um, of motherhood and small children. And to be honest, I don't have a lot of brain cells left. 
<laughs> so is there anything that you could share or a story or an encouragement to those who are perhaps in a single season just of what God has for them? Because I know from my own experience, the darker the night, the brighter the stars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and sometimes God's no is just that He has better and so um, mm. that that is my encouragement, and also not to settle. Mm. Come on, because Ooh. before I met Shay, I I kind of hit my wall, and I was like, God doesn't want this for me. God does not. He like I am His daughter. He he would not want his daughter treated like this. No. And if that's not what God wants for me, that's not what I want for me. Mm. Um, and that is kind of where I was like, no more of this. And then Shay B. bopped along, and he was like, I'd like to date you. And I was like, well, next man I date, I'm going to marry, and we're going to raise our kids to know and love Jesus, and he's going to be the leader of our home, and we're going to center it all on Jesus. And, I mean, I was like— kind of mad about it because he really poked the bear and I was not interested in anything other than a relationship with Jesus. And so I was just like, no, like this is what God has for me. And his eyes just lit up like like he'd been waiting his whole life. And I knew I was in trouble right then. <laughs> and that is that was all I've I've shared my story before, but I had to get to the point where I knew yeah. that God wanted the best for me and wanted someone that would cherish me and protect my heart, and lead my family. Mm -hmm. Um, And that is what I got. So women, ladies, don't settle. Know your worth. And then I'm going to let you go ahead and speak to what you have been through or secrets that you could share in the waiting. Ah, Hannah, this is all so good. I echo everything you said about (laughs) singleness. I am single. And so, ladies, I'm, I'm I'm here with you too. Like, and thriving, thriving, mind you. Truly thriving, but that wasn't always the case. I was very insecure. And, and it really, we got to go back to our foundation, truly. And for me, my, my big struggle was boys all mm-hmm. throughout, you know, from the very beginning. I mean, in fourth grade, Hannah, I all the boys were chasing me on the playground. And I came home <laughs> to my mom and I said, this is just too much. I, I created a schedule. This boy can chase me on this day. <laughs> This boy Stop. can chase me on the. She still has it somewhere. That is so. And funny. so I just, I just felt like I always had to have a boy, to have worth, honestly. Mm. And I, I know that stemmed from my dad was present in the home, but he traveled throughout the week, mm. so I only saw dad on the weekends. And so you're the way you see God is really through the lens of your earthly father. Right. That's the only example that we have. Correct. And that's the original design. Like he wants the man to lead the home like you you desired for, and now you're getting to live out, which glory to God, that's incredible. And so I, I just looked for that in boys. I looked for my identity and my worth since that wasn't really coming from my father at the time. I was looking f- for that in boys at school. And so I just thought I had to have a boyfriend. So this was my story all throughout high school. And I made lots of mistakes. And poor mama, I think I gave her her gray hairs early because of this from her sweet, precious red hair. Love you, mom. (laughs) But you know how it is. And she's just praying for me and trying to share her story with me. And I just thought, man, like, I I just want to be loved, honestly. Yes. I want to be loved. And for sometimes I thought that meant I had to do certain things with a boy for them to love me mm-hmm. or say a certain thing or whatever, look a certain way, mm-hmm. lose weight, whatever it may be to be accepted. I kept running when the Lord was right there the whole time and was like, I already do love you. I'm the one that made you. You're exactly the way I wanted you to be. Mm-hmm. You don't have to change. Let me love you. We love, God's word says, because he first loved us. And if we do not love, we do not know God. It says in First right. John 4. And it's so sweet that his perfect love casts out all fear. So all these fears that I had of not being enough, not being loved, like his perfect love, Jesus himself, he casts all that out. And when we look and turn to him, we are found. And so this was my story up until really college. I still was like learning to let go. Mm -hmm. But I came to this place where I had to realize, ladies, that I was not being overlooked. I was being hidden for the right one. Mm, That's so good. And so don't think, oh, I'm not getting asked to the prom. I'm not, you know, getting asked to the homecoming dance. Why, Why are we the same age and she's already married with two kids? Like, oh, they just got engaged, and here I am still right. with my, my cat 
or my kitten right. <laughs> on, on a Friday night. And really, you are not being overlooked. You are being hidden. And that that has helped me a whole lot. And then also, too, I feel like in this area of our prayer life, too, praying for our future husband, it's kind of hard mm-hmm. because you can't see it. But right. here's the thing. Faith is evidence of things hoped for and yet not, not seen. seen. Okay? So, my gosh, you're praying for this guy. My my stars, his name may be Faith when you see him. It's like, I've been looking for you. <laughs> you are. Whoo. Seriously, like, we need to pray like we believe it. Why are we—if if we're praying prayers that we don't even believe in, why are we praying? Yeah. Like, for real. Like, for your husband, I want us—and I talk about this in the book— I want us to exchange our puppy dog prayers for lion prayers. Mm. His so word says to approach his throne of grace with confidence. Yes. We don't need to be saying, oh, Lord, I hope you come through in this area. I just would really like to be married. Da, da, da. Even that is a little selfish too. Right. And so when we exchange that for a lion prayer, an example would be like, Lord, this is the area that reflects you the most. Your bride and the church, my gosh, like that is everything. Mm. You, the bridegroom, like, hey, make me into who you need me to be. And I am, I'm here. I'm ready. I surrender what I think I need and want for what you have. And so that's another thing. Just be praying a little bit more confidently. And the last thing that I'll share, um, I, I literally could talk about this all day. I love this so much, is it is revealed in the spirit before it's revealed in the natural. Mm. And so if you want to be a wife, Single ladies, I need you to start walking like it. That's right. You need to start walking like it. And I know some people like will buy a like a tie and pray over the tie. You know, this is for their future husband. For me, I went to TJ Maxx and I found me a cute mug because I love coffee, <laughs> love tea, and it's a white mug and it just says Mrs. <laughs> And I bought it. I love that so much. (laughs) And so I just pour that cup of tea. I don't use it all the time. I'm not crazy, I promise. (laughs) But like ever so often when I need encouraged in my own heart of like, hey, I'm not being overlooked. I'm being hidden. Like God has a plan for me and I want to pursue his plan and not mine and not settle and not, you know, do get it into my own hands. You know, I I pour myself a a cup in that mug (laughs) and, uh, I think about how this is played out in God's Word. It was revealed to Abraham that he was going to have a son. And the angel of the Lord came to him and said, like, you're going to have a son. And we all know, you know, there was laughter. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And his name was Isaac. But there were 20 years that went by between it revealed in the Spirit to it happening in the natural. Mm -hmm. And a lot of doubt, a lot of, God, did you really say? And then they bring it into their own hands. You know, if you read that story in Genesis and, but it was revealed in the spirit. And what are you going to do once you get a word from God? Same thing with Mary Mm -hmm. and Luke, the angel came to her and said, you're going to birth the Messiah. And her response was, so be it unto me. That's right. So be it. Okay. And that should be our response and the posture of our hearts. Yes. And I'm, okay, look, you know, I didn't mean to bring my Bible. Well, I did, but I was like, I won't use this. Listen to this. Come this on. makes me so happy. Oh, please. Um, I love that just, translation. I, it's the best. Guys, if you haven't tried the Passion Translation, it is the bomb.com. Okay, let me find it here. It is Timothy. And I literally just shared this with some of my friends the other night. We were talking about using the word words spoken over you as warfare, Come like on. as part of your warfare to yeah. fight spiritual battles. Oh, Because Paul sure. is writing to Timothy to encourage him, and he's like, remember all these words that were spoken over you. Remember what God said. Remember what was said over you. Hold on to those and use them as weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're so not. The pulling downs of strongholds. Like, you're right. Our words have so much power, and we don't even realize that. And that's why we mm-hmm. can't pray puppy dog prayers. That's right. That's why we can't speak death in an area that we we want to have life in. Mm-hmm. Because the blessings and the cursings come in and, the tongue. And, yes. And so that's why we got to speak over those babies such life. Speak over your spouse. Speak over yourself and into your future. Mm-hmm. Truly. And so— it's revealed in the spirit before the natural. So how are you going to walk 
in the spirit because you can't walk in the flesh and the spirit. That's right. And so we have to deny our flesh and we have to pick up our cross and follow him daily. And Mm. so get excited, pray expectantly, pray boldly over this person. And in the waiting, be that person that he's called you to be in your singleness because you need to be set apart and secure. And it's really not like I'm, I'm not single, like I'm whole. Right. I'm whole in him. Right. And so what does it look like for you to be fully you? That's whole. right. And so, ah, ladies, it's I so exciting that. for you. I know yeah. I know sometimes I've looked at at, at girlfriends and, and thought to myself, at least friends or, or or people that I have seen who chase relationships because that's where they yeah. kind of find their identity, like they can't be alone. Um, and it really breaks my heart because so often I just want to say, or I have said, until you can love yourself the way God loves you, come on. then how can you expect a man to come in and, and love you like that? Because you have got to find that with your creator. Yeah, you have to receive it You first. have to receive <laughs> it because if unless you receive that from God, you are looking to a man— here on earth to fill that for you. And and we are just human. Like yeah. we are faulted. And I love my husband, but he is he's flawed and so am I. And I can't look to him to fill the hole that only God can fill because he's my maker and that's my worth, not my husband. He is not my worth. Now do I love being a wife and does that fulfill so much of the purpose that God has put in me? Yes, yes, Mm -hmm. yes. But we couldn't get to that place until I got to the place alone with God, which is where I was. I call it being in the nest, okay? Just picture a baby bird in a nest, Mm -hmm. and that's what I call it. And then when Shay entered the scene, I could feel God nudging me. You know how mama (sighs) birds push their Mm -hmm. babies out of nest? That's what I could, in the spiritual, feel God going, it's time, time to go. To go. Yeah. And I was just like fighting it so much. It's scary because you it might was fall. So right? scary. Yes. But you might fly. Yes. And I knew that he was saying, it's time, it's time. But it was time because I had come to him and I knew who he said that I was. And I knew that I was his daughter. And I knew that I was cherished and called and chosen before the foundations of the earth were formed. Like that's how much he loved me. And I wasn't going to find that in anyone or anything else. So no. then God was like, okay, ma'am, now we're ready for the next, th- you next know, season. the next season. <laughs> That's so beautiful. And, and too, in your singleness, Hannah, like, let the Lord pursue you, too. I, You're reminding me, like, last fall, I, I was kind of scared to even go out by myself. Mm. Like, for real. Mm-hmm. I didn't even want to be alone, like, take myself alone. I couldn't have told you if I had ever gone to a restaurant and just sat by myself. Mm. I, I would always invite someone or just stay home. It's intimidating. For sure. And so I tried to push myself out of that nest you're talking about. <laughs> and so I love the movies. And they don't got no good movies anymore, no, really. No. But at the time, there was a few good movies coming out. And so I was going to see a movie by myself like every other week or so. I'd pack a peanut butter jelly sandwich in my purse, as you do. I wrote myself a sweet little note, like, you are loved, you are seen, <laughs> like, to myself. And I went to the movie. And actually, one of those movies was a Christian movie, Run, Running the Bases or Run the Bases. Really good, a baseball Christian movie. Highly recommend it. You should go watch it. It's probably on Pure Flix. <laughs> but that gave me so much strength to say, like, I can do this. And you know what's funny? One time I was there by myself. I had my popcorn, my sandwich in my purse, and also a blanket in hand. I always bring a blanket. I'm cold all the time. Me too. And I saw a guy that I went on one date with in college, and he was out on a date with someone else. (gasps) No. He was at the soda machine with all the little options. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Oh, I said, hey. And in that moment, I could have like, first of all, not even said anything, right? I mean, good past. for you. I would have, like, put my head down and power walked to my seat. You know what? I, I just said hello, and I was actually quite grateful. I'm like, Lord, he's not who you have from me. And so how are you doing? He said he's good and that he joined the military. And I'm like, praise God. Like, this is incredible. Like, I just— I, it's good to see you. And I just went on and I, I loved that because every moment is a divine appointment. Mm, yes. And so I think about that at the grocery store, wherever you go. And this is another opportunity to pray. So seriously, the next morning, I prayed for him in my prayer time. Wow. And so, man, oh man, 
that's another way the enemy, you can let the enemy in of like, oh, he's on a date and I'm not, right? Man. You can let the enemy in, but the enemy only has as much territory in your life as you give him. Wow. What a lesson. Listen to your perspective. So I you mean, I close literally, that door. I literally just said that I would have put my head down and like power walked out of there. But you said, you know what? No. God <laughs> works all things to the good. And you took something from that. That yeah. is powerful. It is all about our perspective and letting him change that. Um, and that just really comes through spending time with him. So singleness is, is a gift because you're not going to go back. It like is a gift. You're married and, yeah, and three and, boys and like a farm. You got your yeah. little kitties. I mean, <laughs> we, it, we are a nut house. And I wouldn't change a thing, but I do think sometimes of the days when um, I would have like a whole weekend to myself and not know what to do with myself. And now if I have like an hour, I'm like, okay, do I want to? <laughs> clean. Yeah, like literally, I like have to pick the things that I want to do in the small window of time. And so so my quiet time with the Lord, like that's like hard fought for time kind of in my yeah. house right now and in my season. So there's a gift in that. Like where you are and the thing that God is preparing you for, there's, there's a gift in that time that you can be devoted to Him um, before things get really busy. And then continue to Put your devotion to Him first in the busyness because that is what's going to sustain you in the next season. Mm -hmm. It's the foundation. I'm so thankful that our parents gave us that, right? Um, but then in singleness, you can build on that foundation in the Word, in your prayer life. Um, okay, so tell everyone the name of your book. Tell us how this came to be. Um, I have all the questions. Oh, yay. I'm so excited. I'm holding it up right now. Yes, There's no are. one in here except Craig. So I'm like, <laughs> it is a beautiful book. Oh, I love it. I love it, too. It makes me so happy. So my very first devotional book is called, Hi, God, It's Me, 20 Days to a Stronger, More Powerful Prayer Life. And I'm going to be honest. I was not setting out to be an author, Hannah. <laughs> I was not. That was not on my radar. Mm. But he does the unexpected, right? He does. He, he sure does. does. And he just shows up and he shows out when we give our yes. And so truly just taking these same, same small steps in the same direction of going into that prayer closet every morning, I didn't realize that it was more than just for my own personal was walk. preparation, wasn't it? It was preparation. And really, these pages are filled with what I wish I could share with each and every person if we could have coffee, just one-on-one -on -one at a cute coffee shop with a mug, holding our sweet little hands, warming them, and just talking about the Lord and talking about prayer. And it's such a crazy story. Oh my gosh, Hannah. Okay. I grew up in a church where we didn't talk about fasting. Did you? No. Oh. I grew up Baptist. Okay. Which mm -hmm. is very different than, uh, not different, just, it's different. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. And I then, grew up Lutheran, so yeah. it's just different than Baptist. Yeah. But neither of us are either of those things really I anymore. I mean, we're both fine. We don't have <laughs> Yeah, we both we're made great. It. Look at us. No, but, but, but I feel like there, there are great foundations and you can, you can take so much of, you know, knowing the Word of God and knowing what the principles of the Bible are versus, like, the living relationship. And I think that yeah. everyone comes to that on their own, mm -hmm. not necessarily in any church, you For know, sure. any denomination. That's like a—you're going to have to get there on your own. So anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you didn't grow up with fasting. I didn't grow up with fasting. And now I'm—I don't claim a denomination. I claim Christ, yes. and He's the way, the truth, the life, and I just follow Him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So when I'm reading the Bible, I learned about fasting. And the church that I was attending at the time did a corporate fast. I didn't even know what that was. And so I thought I'd join, you know. And I used to think fasting was not being on social media. But that is a type of surrender. Right. right. But a fast, a biblical fast, you know, in God's word is abstaining from food. And so I decided at the top of 2022 that I would join this corporate fast. We're four days in. It's January 4th. My stomach is growling louder than a gorilla. Like <laughs> at this point, I'm like, I'm hungry. I will eat anything in sight. 
But I was like, okay, Lord, I want to hear your voice. And I was. I was hearing his voice more clearly than I ever had in my entire life. My spiritual senses were heightened. My flesh was weakened, you know. And I am on my face in my prayer closet. I would never done that before. My stars. Like I, a year ago, I would have been like, who are you, you know? <laughs> but the, the more that you spend time with him, you don't mind getting undignified before him. And so I'm just on my face. I'm like, what's next, Lord? What's next? And all he said was book, just a little whisper of book. I said, me? You know, I'm thinking that's my friends. I've grown up as, you know, the best friend or behind the scenes of seeing all my other friends do that. That's them, Lord. I'm going to cheer them on. But I, I didn't think that was me. And so I was like, all right. So I did know that without all this food in my system, that it wasn't the bad Mexican food or whatever. So I was like, this is God's voice. So I start pursuing it because I knew that faith without works is dead. So I'm like, I'm going to reach out to some publishers. I reached out to um, one here local in Nashville. Through podcasting, I knew some publicists, so I reached out to them Mm -hmm. because I didn't know. Of course. And then one other publisher that I just thought, okay, why not? So I reached out to them. And within the week, I heard back from two, and the doors were shut. I said, all right, that's fine. And I really thought the Lord said this, you know? And I didn't hear back from the third. So at this time, I'm like, all right, Lord. I thought you said. And the Lord said, yes, you're going to write a devotional on prayer. I said, okay. So I put it on a sticky note, stuck it on the wall. I'm believing in faith. And in the meantime, what do you do? What do you do when you're in the waiting? Well, you worship and you work, okay? Okay wholeheartedly unto the Lord. So here's what I'm doing. I'm still finishing up this fast, and uh, I start writing. But what I start writing was not a 20-day devotional on prayer. It really was my heart and my testimony, right. just all the hurts and the hang-ups. And it's really sweet because the Lord wants us to go through our healing mm. before He does mighty things in our life. And, and even I think about in the book of Acts, He says, don't leave here until you get the Holy Spirit. Yes. Like, don't leave here. Don't go out and preach and teach and do miracles until you have the Spirit with you. And so I had to have that healing before He could do what He needed to do through yes. me. So I wasn't bleeding on people right. that didn't cut me. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then I write. I cry. I get my healing that I need to get. And a month later, I get an email from Dayspring. And they say, oh, my goodness, this has been in our drafts for over a month. No. We thought we sent this to you. We've actually wanted to work with you for a couple years now. Let's set up a call. Wow. I was like, wow. Wow. And so we set up that call. It was sweet. And then we had an in-person meeting because they're out of Arkansas where I'm from. And I went back home Mm -hmm. for one of my best friend's weddings. So it just worked out. And when I got to this meeting, they had all these devotionals in their hand, laid them on the table at the coffee shop. And the first thing the publisher said was, is, I really think that you should write a devotional on prayer. Wow. And now... Here we are. Here we are. (laughs) Wow. It was so sweet. And so um, it's really sweet. The Lord wants us to partner with Him and to pursue Him and to pursue the things that He said to us. But then when the doors open and you don't have to really like jiggle the lock, just walk through. Like when God God says, when God asks you to do something and you say yes, He makes the way, right? I mean, that was my, that was my podcast. I, yeah, it, the whole real. story of my podcast. I was just like, "Who me? No, mm-hmm. you know." And didn't. And then when it happened, it was like swift. Yes, it immediately was we so, see that in scripture. Yes. Wow, I love that so much. It's so fun. And so I wrote it last summer. It was so sweet. I wrote it when I was in a season of nannying. So I would literally write as they were sleeping from one to three every day. And I I just had the sweetest time writing it. And what was so fun is I'd been living this message out already for three and a half mm-hmm. years. And so it wasn't hard to write. I just got to share from a place of I've been there I know what you're feeling. I want to sit with you through this, and I want to be your friend. Yes. And I want you to see God as your Father, and that prayer is just sharing your life with your Savior, and that it is an intimate friendship. Because so often we don't see prayer as that. We just think it has to look or sound a certain way. And right. with, hi, God, it's me. I want you to find freedom. I want you to find freedom, healing, and intimacy mm. when it comes to prayer. I love it. 
I love it. And I love that you go through. Do you care if I share? Oh, yeah. I am going to read just your table of contents because yeah. when I opened this, I just was smiling so big because I've even thought to myself, gosh, I should just break this down one day and like really go through it line by line. Yeah. And that's exactly what you did. So teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. King, Your kingdom come, thy will be done. She goes through the entire Lord's prayer. And I've literally talked about this on the podcast before, but, um, you know, growing up Baptist, it was the Lord's Prayer, and we said it after all of our basketball games, and Mm. we said it, like, all the time at school, but I guess I never, it never really clicked with me that this was, like, a format. I know, me too. For for us to use— Like a template for us to, to to practice when we talk to God. Like every line of it, you break it down so beautifully. And then I love this too. In Jesus' name, prayer is priority. Prayer is protection. Prayer is powerful. Prayer changes perspective. Prayer through the, praying through the Psalms. Prayer is praise. Jesus prayed for you and my prayer for you. It is so good. And if you like to journal or even if you haven't journaled yet, but you're willing to give it a try, like me, she has um, space in here and lines and reflective questions. And it really, really will help you get into a rhythm and a routine to start talking to God if that's not something that you're comfortable with. And maybe ask some things of Him that are, again, out of your comfort zone or foreign even. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe you just never thought to talk to God like that. And it's a beautiful way, I think, to change your perspective Mm -hmm. on a relationship with Him. And I think this is so, so needed. And I love that God allowed you to be the one to do this. That's something that I think about often. Um, and I love that you're from Arkansas. I know. And I think about how how could God use someone, like someone from a small town, Arkansas, yeah. to come here into this metropolis of a city where, you know, people from all over the world come and entertainment is put out all over the world from here. How could he use me? You know, and I didn't, set out for that. But what we did, Georgia, Mm -hmm. is we gave him our yes. We did. And he said, all right, man, buckle up because we're going places. And we never looked back. Yeah. We never did. Even when it got hard or even when there was questions or heartache or lots of tears and we couldn't even pray, our prayers were the tears. Mm. Man, like I'm just, again, like you said, I'm just honored to steward this and to share it. And I just pray that it blesses you and meets everybody right where they're at. I'm just so, I'm just blown away by the Lord because it is all by Him, through Him, and for Him. It is. And how about the fact that we met four years ago at a women's conference, and then I think we met again at like a midnight service for New New Year's Year's. at a church that I didn't even go to. (laughs) And it was just, I mean, God, so I call sweet. it God winks, but like yeah. God just kept like dropping us into each other's paths. And I just can't wait to see what else he has in store because I figure it's not done yet. I want you to tell everyone where they can find you, where they can find your book and anything else that you've got going on um, down yeah. the pipeline, if you can. I don't know if you Ooh. if you have any fun stuff in store. <laughs> Oh, man, oh, man. You can find Hi, God, It's Me anywhere books are sold. I always say that on on my podcast, like when you interview yeah. a person, like anywhere books are sold. I've always wanted to say it. I'm so glad it's you got so to fun. say it. Anywhere books are sold. So Amazon, dayspring.com, walmart.com. And um, yeah, you can find me. I like to hang out on Instagram. I on, love following you on oh, Instagram. Oh, it's so fun. I love the you internet. Fun. My little corner is uh, I am Georgia Brown, and you can come join the Faith and Friends community. I have a podcast called Faith and Friends. We have new episodes every Friday. And that's something with this Devo that we have as a prayer series. That has oh, a, I saw that. A you QR have a, code. A QR yes. code. That is so fancy. It's so fun. So what we did is we had 20 conversations on prayer as well. I love and it. And it's so fun. You know how this is with Holy Spirit is I thought that the conversation would go a certain way. Yes. Like, hey, your topic is prayer is powerful. Mm. And then the Lord was like, pivot, <laughs> which is so sweet. So you can check those episodes out. Because I know a lot of people are, you know, kinesthetic or auditory or visual learners. So we have something for everyone in this Devo. And 
coming up. Um, I have some few speaking engagements, so I might be at a city near you the a rest of this year. tour? Did I see that? Oh, uh, I've been doing a few little yes, drops. That I, is so cool. I think the third one's going to be in Florida. Wow. wow. I got me a little cute outfit for the beach. I'm excited. I'm like, Maybe we'll meet your future husband there. Ooh. You, you mm-hmm. like how I said we? You like yes. how I was going to go yes, with come you? with me. You can be my carry-on. <laughs> I'll be with you in spirit. No, for real. Maybe we'll meet him there. We, we're going to keep praying bold line we will. Listen, you know my favorite <laughs> thing to do is Yes, I like to say th- and thank you for it at the end. Yes. I just like to, th- I just, you know, it says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart and I will enter his courts with praise. And I just love that. And when I'm praying big, bold prayers, I like to say, and thank you for doing it, Jesus. Yeah, already. Thank already. you in advance. And just leave it open for you. Yeah, him. mic drop. That's a mic yeah. drop moment it is of, a mic I drop. believe you. Like, yeah. if you said it, I believe it. That's we right. sing all these songs. It's time we believe them. And so I just, I love that. And so I hope to see you wherever that yes. is next if that's on Instagram if that's on a podcast or hopefully maybe you'll see me and Hannah around Nashville probably we run into each other we might go get coffee sometime yeah we send, should send out an invite for everyone that wants to join <laughs> so fun so here's the thing let God show up in the unexpected because he's gonna blow your mind yes. I thank you for doing this podcast for real thank, thank you for you your yes for oh. coming on and oh. saying yes to me this has been fun and I love sharing you sharing your story and your life and I love you too and I just hope that you guys are blessed by this conversation conversation. And if you needed it, pass it along to someone else that you might think needs it. We love you. We hope you have a great week. Yes. Oh, may the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may he give you his peace. Amen. Bye guys. Thank you so much for listening today. If this episode has encouraged you, please feel free to share the show with your family and friends. There's a lot of stuff going on in the world today. And my hope is that this show is a candle in the dark. 